All right, hey guys, Shane here, and I'm here with Sanjay of E3D. Hey, good to have you in. Yeah, thank you. So I kind of want to talk about, I mean, we see a lot of your stuff online. Yeah. I mean, I use tons of E3D gear myself. Thank you. Thank and I kind of just want to go over, you know, what do you, what's new, you know, well, obviously we know you got the printer here going, yeah. um, but also, you know, what's, what are people expecting from E3D quality wise, things like that? Yeah, and so we've got some kind of small usability updates and that we've got the V6 that instead of using groove mount, we're using a threaded coupling. Um, and we've got um, also the main thing that we were to announce here was Super Volcano. Um, we sadly don't actually have an example of it because we got held up at customs, but effectively it's like our Volcano hot end, which is a high flow hot end, but it um, provides three times higher melt flow. Wow, so, okay. Yeah, so you're going a lot faster than with that. You can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's for people that, you know, like Budman who want to print furniture. Um, it's for like that scale of printing. Okay. You lose some resolution, but you'd gain a lot of speed. Um, so that's uh, one of our big main things. Um, another one is these beds. Um, so this is an extremely high power, high temperature heated bed. Um, and it's designed for printing the kind of ultra performance polymers, you know, your Ultem and Peak mm -hmm. and these types of materials. And so it's a, it's a silicone pad um, on a machined aluminium tooling plate. Um, but unlike other, you know, where they just have a self adhesive pad, mm -hmm. which they peel off at high temperatures. You can, yep. Um, because the adhesive fails. Um, we don't have adhesive. What we're doing is we're actually um, curing the silicone into and onto the metal. So oh, wow, okay. this starts out as a liquid uncured silicone in the heater. And we use, what we actually do is we start the anodization process of the aluminium to open up the pores on the surface and get that um, uncured, kind of unsealed aluminium oxide. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we use heat and pressure to cure the silicone into that porous surface so it's literally like mechanically locked into place uh, with the heater and then we finish do the finishing process. Oh, that's all. So what are we looking at temps wise on this? Uh, 200 plus. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that is yeah. pretty doggone high temp. Exactly, yeah, it's very, very high temperature. Um, I actually don't know how hot it will go maximum, <laughs> but I mean, I, I've yet to hear of a polymer that requires more than 200 on the bed, so we'll leave it there. Yeah, yeah. and then so you're actually printing straight on it with your printer here. Uh, yeah, yeah. In this case, um, well, actually, the reason for that is because our glass well, got held up. Yeah, yeah. So we just put glue stick straight on. But it speaks to the fact that um, it's made from aluminium tooling plate, so it's an inherently very, very flat surface. So it's going to go really well with your ultra flat glass and things of that nature. So it's, yeah, very flat and very stiff. Yeah, excellent. So also want to talk about the different um, nozzles you guys uh, produce because not everyone knows that you can get more than just brass nozzles from you. Yeah. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about what yeah. all the different you know types and more of the materials mm -hmm. that nozzles are made of that you guys offer. Yeah, and we actually have a new one that we're announcing today. Um, we don't have to show off again for the same reasons. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we have brass. So well, let's talk about why we use brass in the first place. Turn you a little bit this way. Yeah, yeah, there absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about why we use brass in the first place. It's because brass is really easy to machine. And nozzles are very fine objects, and we've got these very small holes. So we use polymers and plastics that are, sorry, not polymers. We use metals that are yes. easy to cut precisely. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, nothing beats brass. CZ121 is the easiest to machine metal. Mm -hmm. um, but it has downsides in that it's also a very soft material. Correct. Um, for the same reasons, it makes it easy to cut. It makes it easy for fi carbon fibers to abrade away. Um, and wear and them out quite quickly. Yeah. Exactly, especially at elevated temperatures where the wear properties become even worse. Yeah. So that kind of brings us on to why we have different materials. So the first and most obvious one and most popular is hardened steel. Hold so, this up here so yeah. look at them. A hardened steel are uh, made from A2 tool steel. Um, so they're drastically harder than brass, so many, many times harder than brass, which means that they last pretty much, as far as we can tell, for forever on carbon fiber um, filled polymers like um, XTCF20, protopastors, carbon fiber filled PLA. Um, so the hardened steel are designed explicitly for use with abrasive materials. 
They're, they're also just generally, uh, they, they last longer. Um, in normal use, the nozzles get battered and bruised here and there. Yep. You knock them into the mm -hmm. glass. You clean we them all do that. Glass. <laughs> yeah, like they, and it kind of over time the, the surface kind of deforms because they're soft. But that doesn't happen with a hardened steel nozzle. They last pretty much forever. You'd have to really abuse one to get one to to, to fail. Yeah, and then the, the thermal conductivity properties of it are almost as good as brass. Obviously, brass uh, is some of the best. Uh, so, yes. Well. This is an interesting question. We recently done a whole bunch of tests. Now, the job of the hot end is to get, uh, you know, what, get get yeah. jewels into the polymer. Um, now, the main uh, actual obstruction to the jewels of the heater getting into the polymer is actually the polymer itself, because the polymer is the least conductive part mm -hmm. of the system by many, like two, three orders of magnitude. Which means that, yeah, if you change the like the actual the thermal resistance of the hot end itself is like one percent of the equation. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, and so it really doesn't affect your maximum flow rate. Even if you go down to stainless, which has the worst conductivity of all of the nozzles that we sell, we can't detect a significant difference. And we have built test equipment to try and detect this yeah. change, and we can't detect it. Well, that almost seems like that would knock out some of the old wives tales because there are so many people that say oh well if you're gonna use this nozzle you're gonna get so much worse thermal performance out of it which I mean from what you're saying it basically doesn't matter then no and you can prove that fundamentally from the maths right um, yes we've done it empirically um, but you can show from the maths that the thermal resistance stack um, is you know, it means that the as long as you're using a metal with a conductivity of more than 10 then you, the point is moot that's, that's very interesting to hear, yeah, because I did not, and again, I was on almost, not the bandwagon, but I was in there standing that it does matter. Yeah, yeah. But again, what whatever you're says, saying, right? yeah, everyone says, yeah. uh, literally, everyone says yeah, that yeah, online. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you go with the masses, but from yeah. what you're telling me, that's very interesting to know that it really doesn't yeah. matter at that point. Yeah. You know, um, so tell me about, um, where can anybody get any of this stuff? Because, I mean, honestly, I know that because it's almost anywhere now. You guys I, sell on everything almost. Yeah, um, so, yeah, I think we're even moving on to Amazon, um, and there are uh, Genuine hot ends available on eBay as well, and we've got a whole range of amazing resellers. Printed Solid are here today; they've helped us out a lot. So big shout out to them. And uh, we've got Philistruder, Matter Hackers. I, the list goes on. Lo loads and loads of resellers at every good 3D printer store. Yep. And uh, I do want to note real quick on this: when are we looking to see this? Because I don't think we've seen it out there yet. Oh, uh, in about. In about two to three months, I'd say. I think that we're okay. going to see this. It's, it's still got some work to do in um, assembly and manufacturing, um, just tightening up the kind of the last little mm -hmm. bits. Um, so there are no technical challenges left. It's all just those little, small, the boring tasks yeah. of actually getting a product to market. Yeah, I have to say, I cannot wait to see this in people's homes and other people trying this out. This looks, I, I have a little video here of it. The tool change is mesmerizing. It really yeah, is. Yeah, it's gorgeous to watch. It still gets me every time. Yeah. It's very satisfying, clunk and click. Yeah, but you're like, yeah, I made that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was Greg. In well, hey, yeah. yeah, it was Greg. Um, but it, we're, I think the thing I'm most excited for is for people to make derivatives <laughs> of this oh, and what they're going to do with it. Because really again, all open source. So all open source, intended to be derived from. Um, so I. I think that it's, you know, there are going to be tool heads out there that do things that I can't even imagine. Um, and I can't wait for those applications to be realized. And that's why we're going to be selling, we're not just making the machine, but we're going to make all the sub-assemblies and components of the machine available, including the tool coupling, so that people can build their own tool changing 3D printers that work in different ways, use different kinematics, pick up different types of heads. Yeah. Great, wait. Well, hey, thank you for the time. Honestly, no it's I'm fanboying a little bit while I'm here. It's a pleasure to meet you. You too. Um, I mean, we see it. I see you on all the other events. I finally get to make it to an event. Yeah, so well. thank you for taking some time out to talk to me. No problem, son. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great time. You too.